It's another wild day in the world of Magic the Gathering. We have just got a crazy leak from the upcoming Caverns of Ixalan set. On top of that, we have a Doctor Who issue to discuss and a secret layer problem we gotta talk about as well. Magic. I am a wizard. History. I'm an old wizard. The Magic Historian. My bones hurt. Greetings, owners of fine luxury cardboard rectangles, my friends. I hope the day finds you well because we have gathered for another glorious installment of Mega Magic News. We've got a juicy leak with an insane creature to take a look at. We have a secret layer disaster scenario going down and Doctor Who has a bit of a hitch in time we gotta discuss as well. So let's start out with the juiciness of the spoiler, the leak. Take a look at the card you see on the screen right now. This is Clevali Clevelinio? Clevelinio! First of the Blessed. One black, one white, and one for a 2-2 legendary vampire cleric. Now, whenever you attack, target attacking vampire that isn't a demon becomes a demon in addition to its other types. It gains when this creature dies, draw a card, and create a tapped 4-3 white and black vampire demon creature token with flying. Continuing in the new tradition of Magic the Gathering, where you tack a bunch of craziness into an ability. This creature gets this ability, and all of this is added onto it as well, which essentially is like an entire new block of text. And it does feel a little bit weird at first when you look at it and go, okay, so whenever you attack, so anytime you attack, you pick one attacking vampire that isn't already a demon, and then you go, wait, how many vampire demons are there in magic in the first place? And you go, what, maybe two? I can't even think off the top of my head of two examples, but maybe they exist in some corner case because it's a cool concept, right? But as you continue to read the ability, you realize, wait a minute, okay, so this is going to turn things into demons. So one by one, you're going to get to turn your vampires into demons and you just go okay so at first it's just gonna make it into a demon which really doesn't do that much but you have the ability that when the creature dies all of a sudden it goes crazy you get to draw a card and you get a 4-3 white and black vampire demon creature so the idea behind this is at first it's really not going to do that much when you look at it. You're going to go, okay, sure, I make my creatures into demons. That doesn't really have much of an ability. Although, on the other hand, it does make it so your opponent's not really going to want to block them, right? When you swing and you go, okay, this guy's got the demon infusion, it's going to be less likely that they want to block. But obviously, this is going to shine in some kind of insane sacrifice strategy where you just don't care about your troops, right? Just throw them away. And then once they go, you get caught card advantage and beef boy flyers like four three flyers and a card draw slapped onto any vampire that's the only thing that limits this from being truly insane is the fact that it's actually just vampires because this is a very solid ability from a power perspective and from a flavor perspective it's absolutely amazing I need to know what's going on in the center of Ixalan because this guy, I'm not sure if he's made a deal with like some kind of demon from the old world, but I'm guessing it's probably found some demon or god that has demons that serve it down deep in the heart of Ixalan made a deal where it's like, okay, power for demonic glory. So we'll give ourselves in service to you. We'll let you claim our vampiric souls. Do vampires even have souls? I don't know how that works, but we'll let you claim our vampiric souls and you turn us into vampire demons. We already saw the one god that's residing down in the heart of Ixalan. So is this another, yo, I've made a deal with one of these god setups? I mean, he's got the big sensor full of uh, like incense, whatever it is that's billowing out, right? But those vapors, those smokes, when they flow up into the face of a vampire, 
all of a sudden it's a demon. This is a twist on the level from dusk till dawn where it's like, yo, did you think it's this one thing? Well, surprise, it's vampires. But now it goes, did you think it's vampires? Surprise, it's demons. So when you stake the heart of the vampire and you're like, be gone, fiend, or you have the light blast down on it. And then instead of the vampire dying, it comes out as a giant demonic version instead. Also, how is it represented in the vampires? Does it change their personalities? Do they grow little horns out of their heads? I don't know, bro. The power level on this is sick. In terms of authenticating this leak, this is actually the card that's shown as the face card for one of the Lost Cavern of Ixalan commander decks. So when you look at it there, it's indisputable pretty much, unless somebody has done an absolutely amazing job of taking that artwork off and editing it onto a card that feel, it feels believable for the current era of magic. So as far as I'm concerned, this leak is genuine. Now that we've talked about that, let us discuss what's going on with Doctor Who. So. This one is another product delay like we've seen in the past, but it's only a partial product delay. So some stores are basically just getting hosed and not getting anything, but it pairs like North American stores are getting most of their allocation and the rest will trickle in later. So ultimately what this means is you need to be aware if you want the Doctor Who stuff, just maybe relax a little bit. If you run out to try and get it immediately, there is a choke in the supply chain. Now, I imagine it's not intentional because Wizards of the Coast doesn't have, I don't, I don't see too much to gain when the Doctor Who stuff has been thrown out there with collector boosters and everything. If it was just commander decks, then maybe they might be trying to do the same thing that happened with the Warhammer decks where you had a delay and then they just kind of boosted up hardcore in price and then wizards fed into that demand doing multiple reprints of those commander decks so bear in mind that may be exactly what's going to happen here wizards may print a whole bunch more doctor who decks so if you run out right away and buy them at inflated prices or the overpriced singles then you're kind of shooting yourself in the foot at the same time there is the possibility that they won't print anymore simply because they're constantly printing stuff right now. They've got Lord of the Rings that they need to keep printing. We've got Modern Horizons 3 on the horizon. So it's not actually guaranteed that they will reprint them. But my gut says hold back to start with if you haven't already got like a locked in pre-order or something like that taken care of. If you're thinking about getting them right when they come out at the end of the week, it's going to be some supply issues. Now, talking about issues, let's talk about secret layer issues. The Beetle and Grimm's Behold Phyrexia Secret Lair. I know, this was in the news a million years ago, because it was like, what, I guess, almost a full year ago that that secret lair was announced, and it has like a specialized deck box and dice and a little communication guide. There's a lot of funkiness to it, right? Overall, a very cool secret lair, but there's a problem with it. People, actually, there's multiple problems. People have been reporting all kinds of different quality issues with it. The dex box has fastenings that are missing or the inside is loose. There are a number of other quality issues. In fact, this is something that we're gonna get to the bottom of ourselves, right? Right here, we're gonna be taking a look at the Beetle and Grimm's Behold Phyrexia Secret Lair. I'm gonna open it up in a live stream tonight over on my other channel. So we will see firsthand if this is something that plagues the entire print run because it is a limited edition run and there is some cool stuff in here. You've got a Phyrexian, a Phyrexian text mental misstep, which looks really cool. You've got the special deck box that actually has little spaces where you can put the special Phyrexian dice. You have a Phyrexian translation guide, which may contain some translation errors. And I have to admit, that's actually the one I'm most concerned about because I love the flavor and lore of magic. I have an entire other channel dedicated to magic lore called Fantasy Geographic. Later this month, we'll have a bunch of stuff for Ixalan coming out. But one of the most exciting parts of this product, one of the most exciting prospects was the Phyrexian like translation study guide that they were including because 
especially when they announced this, we didn't have nearly as much Phyrexian text stuff. They've done more. They've kind of fed us a, a glut of Phyrexian text stuff. And as somebody who really enjoys that, you know, it's from the original Brothers Wars day. The Phyrexia is the best enemy that Magic the Gathering has ever produced. The Eldrazi are really cool. Nicol Bolas has done a bunch of cool stuff, but he's like been overused. The Eldrazi are cool, but Phyrexia, they reign supreme. So ultimately, the contents of this are gonna be exciting to see. We'll take a look and see how many issues there are with this one, if it's more widespread across the products or not, who knows, but either way, thanks for coming by and hearing what I have to say. I'll see you over on the live stream tonight, taking a look inside that box. Big thank you to all of my patrons for supporting my channel. You guys rule, and I will see you all for the next video.